Greetings Android users, this is Reverend Kyle, your Minister of Mobile Devices, and I'm here again with my new Amazon Kindle Fire HD, this is the 7 inch device. Uh, I did an unboxing earlier and now it's time to play around with it a bit. Uh, we've gone over the fact that there is an actual uh, mini HDMI as well as the standard USB port uh, on the back is your uh, speakers and uh, on this side here is your uh, your headphone jack along with your volume up and down and your power button uh, the camera is right here and uh, you have your microphone hole up at the top it doesn't appear that there it, it does appear that there's only one microphone hole as opposed to uh, some of the other devices they have multiple so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on now many people have requested that I do a lot of this in uh, landscape as opposed to portrait mode. So I'm going to do the whole thing, uh, or at least most of it, in, in landscape because that's what a lot of people say that they want to see. Uh, this, when I turn it on, you can see that you do get an ad, and that ad uh, changes as you turn it on and off. And I'll uh, show you something that I've discovered here. So I'm just going to turn it on, I'm going to unlock it. Now, uh, a couple things, I have been playing around with this uh, quite a bit. Uh, found some interesting uh, items, uh, downloaded some games, and did some web browsing and whatnot. Uh, it was very easy for me to take uh, apps that I had available, APK files, and dump them onto this device. Uh, I plugged it into my computer and then dumped APK files onto it, and for the most part, they seem to uh, play friendly. So uh, I do have to say that I'm uh, pleased with the ability for me to put on some apps that I wouldn't have normally been able to get from the Amazon store. Uh, let's just start off here. I'm going to go into this uh, piano uh, program. And <laughs> this is actually kind of interesting. While we have the keyboard on the screen, I'm going to touch on a few things here. Uh, number one, there's no backspace button. There's a delete button, but there's no backspace button. Now, if I were to type something in, the standard Android keyboard would give you the ability to do a backspace. Now, the delete button is actually counterintuitive and is the actual backspace button. I found that very bizarre, along with a return, like this is some sort of 1920s uh, typewriter. Very, very bizarre. Over here on the right-hand side, you'll notice that if I, and I'm going to go back in here for a second, there's a tiny little notch here, two little uh, dashes, and that represents your buttons here. Uh, you've got your menu, and uh, which doesn't seem to do anything here, your back button and your home button. So I'm going to hit back here, and I'm going to say no thanks, and I'm just going to go into the piano. Uh, the main reason I'm going in here is for one, beautiful volume beautiful sound. Uh, three, uh, let's see here, four, well, I can't get them all there, but basically it's ten, 10 point touch like you would expect. That's, uh, that was uh, to be expected though. The screen itself, uh, I have to admit, very pretty. Um, some of you are familiar with the Nexus 7 tablet and, and uh, well, the Nexus 7 tablet didn't come with a camera app uh, natively, or at least it didn't have the ability to get to it. Uh, the Amazon <laughs> Kindle Fire HD uh, follows suit. There is no camera app uh, anywhere that I could find, um, which was very disheartening. And when we'll... <laughs> We'll come back and take a look at the camera here in a bit. Uh, the only thing that they really want you to use it for, I guess, is Skype. And I did install Skype, and the Skype was, uh, was adequate. Uh, I, I do want to talk about the camera for a little bit here. Number one, the camera itself was considered HD. And that frustrates me when they use a, a term like HD when we really don't know what that means. Some people think HD is 1080p, some people think it's 720p, some people define HD as anything more than 480 and, and, and realistically it's, it's an 
ambiguous term. We need to know what that is. So what I did was I actually went out and got an app uh, that I had for uh, my Nexus 7 tablet, which is um, it's by a uh, uh, developer, uh, Moblinks, M-O-B-L-Y-N-X, uh, maybe Moblinks, I'm not sure. Uh, but this was an app that was available for, uh, it was a Jelly Bean camera, and I actually went and downloaded it and uh, installed it on this device and uh, well quite frankly it worked worked like a champ and uh, I'll, I'll go into it here okay so all you're gonna see is my hand hello and, and the light up on my uh, you know move it down a bit so you can see my camera but basically it works uh, this is a, a standard uh, jelly bean uh, I know this is uh, based on ICS is a 4.0 operating system but this is a jelly bean camera app and it works just fine I, I had limited success with some of the other uh, camera apps uh, but this one seemed to work great and I could take a picture Actually, this is recording video right now. And it's funny, we'll go ahead and record the video because you'll hear me and then you'll hear me as well. And I'll stop it. Okay, and I'll go back and play it. And uh, it's gonna give me, it's gonna ask me what we wanna play it with. I'm just gonna play it with the uh, video player that comes with the uh, device. Actually, this is recording video right now. And it's funny, we'll go ahead and record the video because you'll hear me and then you'll hear me as well. <laughs> um, notice anything in particular? The video records upside down. <laughs> I don't know why, but it does. It's something that can be very easily manipulated if you were to copy it over to your uh, desktop machine. Uh, but I, I do have to tell you that the device apparently is capable of recording at 1080p. Uh, I recorded this video at 1080p, it also records at 720p, and then of course the uh, standard definition 480p. Uh, it recorded it. Uh, the audio was uh, obviously mono, and it was a lower bit rate than I'd like to admit uh, that I, I, I would appreciate a higher uh, quality audio when I'm recording video, but I guess for the purposes of um, uh, video uh, conferencing, you don't really need that great of audio, but it, it actually did work at 1080p. Um, I was also able to take photos uh, with it, and when I took the photos, the photos came out uh, 1280 by 720 resolution. Um, it, I was okay with that. Uh, it, was, it was relatively decent uh, photo. I would say that this camera is on par with what the Nexus 7 is offering. If not, possibly slightly better with a few nuances here and there. So that's something to consider. Uh, the HD camera demystified. It actually is a pretty, uh, pretty nice camera. Okay, beyond the camera, let's take a look at the next most obvious thing that everybody wants to know, and that's video playback. So let's take a look here. Now I do have uh, Netflix, and uh, I'll just go into Netflix real quick here. We'll kick it into uh, portrait mode. And we'll just uh, we'll just throw a little uh, Super Troopers on here. Relatively funny movie. Amazing audio, by the way. Okay, um, yeah, the audio is, uh, again, very, very nice um, coming out of both speakers. You can definitely tell that there is a superiority here over the uh, Nexus 7. Um, and, and other tablets, to be honest with you, this is the best audio I've, I've seen on a tablet yet. The video itself is very crisp, very clear. I'm very impressed with the video. Uh, there was a slight bit of stuttering, of course, you know, that could just be my connection, no big deal. Um, in, in terms of the uh, browsing and whatnot, seems to be relatively fluid going through the app. So Netflix itself, big win, uh, very big win there. Let's go and take a look at this here, this icon here represents the uh, standard video player that comes with the, um, with the device uh, by default. And uh, you'll notice our video in here that we, uh, we did earlier. 
Um, I have three videos on this device right now. I have a uh, 1080p uh, sample from a uh, animated movie called Ratatouille, and uh, we'll go ahead and try to play that here again. This is 1080p, um, and it's a, uh, I believe it's MKV format. And we'll go ahead and play it with the standard player. And it starts to play and then dies. All right, uh, these two videos here, one is a 720p uh, version of the Dark Knight uh, trailer, and the other one is a 1080p uh, trailer, uh, the exact same trailer but in 1080p. We'll go ahead and just hit one and do the regular video player. Nope, can't play it. This is an MOV format, by the way. I'll hit that. And nope, doesn't want to play that. Okay. This was very frustrating. I put several videos on here, and it seemed to like uh, low-res AVIs, uh, things that were recorded, standard definition. Uh, I did get it to play a 720p video, and it looked fine, um, but it was very particular about the, uh, the formats. Uh, like I said, um, the MKV, it didn't play. I don't know if it was because it was 1080p or if something else was you know, getting in the mix. So, to circumvent that, uh, because I don't like to be told that that's, uh, I can't play that video. I installed, let me just find it here. I actually don't see it in here. I'll just go into my apps. MX Player. Went out and got MX Player from, uh, again, uh, I had it on another device. And so I just uh, copied the APK file over. We'll go ahead and play this uh, Dark Knight Rises 720p trailer. Uh, we'll just resume from where I left off because I'm not sure where I was watching it. Let's see here. Oh, doesn't want to do that. That's interesting. Well, let's go back. Long press. Huh. A little fickle. Obviously, it's there it goes. A couple taps and it started working fine for me. It's probably because it doesn't understand the uh, API for the. There we go. So, again, this is the 720p. Do you think he's coming back? We'll skip ahead a bit. Get in the middle here. All right, so there's some action you can see handling it, no problem. Again, audio amazing, video very crisp, very clear. Uh, let's take a look now at the uh, 1080p. Again, a couple multi taps gets past the uh, the uh, interface there. We'll zip ahead a bit. Okay, 1080p, again, uh, very surprisingly, big win. Uh, it looks very clear, very crisp on this screen. Uh, hopefully this is doing it justice. But one of the concerns was, is it gonna be able to handle HD video? And <laughs> it, it seems to be doing great. As a matter of fact, this is, uh, this is right on par with what I would expect a, a seven inch tablet to be able to do with uh, this type of juice. So. Stock player, not so much. Uh, putting on something third-party MX player uh, seems to be the big winner there. Um, let's see here. What else did I throw on here that would make some sense to take a look at? Let's take a look at the, uh, the book reader. Uh, let's see here. Where is... We'll just go into the legend of King Arthur and his knights. So one of the new features that this uh, has that was supposed to be pretty cool was the ability to have it read to you. Um, you go into settings and text to speech and you turn it on and you can do other things, change your, uh, your font size and white and sepia and all of that stuff, but we'll leave that as it is. And what you do is you just hit play Barons to pay him homage. Having conquered Ireland, he went next to Iceland and subdued it also. 
and the winter being then arrived, returned to Britain. In the next year he set forth to Norway, whence many times the hidden had descended on the British coasts, for he was determined to... Okay, you kind of get the idea. It's text-to-speech. Um, it's probably one of the nicest text-to-speeches that I've dealt with because it's really, uh, you know, it's, it's a female voice. It's very smooth. The scansion and the way that she speaks seems to be very mellow. Uh, they're uh, playing around with it a bit. I did notice a few times where she slipped up on some words, uh, some uh, jargon or things that uh, she wouldn't normally be able to understand. Uh, there's also the ability if the book uh, allows it, there is the ability to have an actual professional reading downloaded uh, through, uh, I believe it's called Audible, and uh, you pay for it. And so you can have the audio book and the, and the textbook, and it'll actually, as it's reading, zip through and tell you where it left off. And so you can switch back and forth between the text and the um, and the uh, audio, and I found that novel, uh, but just as novel as this, really. I mean, the only difference is, is you get some uh, somebody with, you know, uh, maybe a little bit more pizzazz reading it to you. But either way, it's a new feature, and I kind of like it. Uh, there's something called X-Ray, and I know that that was supposed to be a big feature. Um, it's not available for all books. I have yet to find a book that it's available for that I own. So something to deal with uh, a little later. In terms of book reading, you know, that, that's kind of what I would expect. Um, let's talk a little bit about YouTube. Uh, the YouTube app does not exist um, in the Amazon store that I could find. Uh, so if somebody knows where it is, please tell me where it is because I couldn't find it. Um, and it would make sense that it wouldn't show up. But the YouTube app itself, again, I went out and I found uh, an APK and downloaded it. And uh, a couple interesting pieces about it is uh, you can't sign in. If you go to sign into it, um, it, it doesn't have the Google uh, framework, so it can't sign you in. So you're just going to be basically flying solo. But you can click on the videos. You can play them. They do play HD, um, and, and they work out fantastic. Uh, I'm not going to show you because we, we've already seen the way it handles video, and if you believe that, then this is how uh, it handles this as well. So YouTube, definitely, uh, it can happen. Um, let's see what else we have here. Okay, let's see, we've got uh, um, web browsing. Let's take a look at some web browsing here. So I'm gonna click on, uh, I was already browsing out to my own website, reverendkyle.com. If you haven't been there, please go check it out. Uh, all of my content is available there, as well as a uh, forum that you can go and uh, talk to me and talk to the other people in my community. I am gonna turn this in portrait mode for the purposes of, uh, of this demonstration. So let's uh, kinda kick it into gear here. Okay, so here's zooming uh, as smooth as it is on uh, any other uh, contemporary device. Um, I find this browser to be good on some web pages and not so good on others. Um, it, it took a, a minute to figure out how to handle my website. It took a minute to figure out how to do the videos from my site. Now these are YouTube videos that are embedded under my page. It, so I'm sure you've seen this before. <laughs> and it does turn. Okay, so that's, uh, it does play the video but it opens itself up in uh, a different uh, a different window there or actually I'm, I'm sure it's uh, executing the YouTube app since it's available but it looks like it's handling all of my scripting and everything relatively well um, not too uh, not too uh, worried about that um, obviously there's uh, in terms of flash support and things like that it doesn't exist um, you know flipping back and forth between uh, different pages uh, it, it loads, I guess, as well as can be expected, in considering the, um, you know, considering the page itself and considering my network connection and all of that, it does okay. Uh, I'm not going to lie; uh, I would love to see another app, uh, another browser, maybe uh, Firefox or uh, possibly Chrome, come to this device. Now, here's what's funny is when you're in this, uh, when you're in uh, portrait mode, you'll notice that there's trending items. If you actually purchase an app from the app store, uh, on below it here, there is actually 
uh, ads that appear down here. And we'll kind of skim over here to the end where there's offers. <laughs> These are all of the uh, all of the ads that show up on my home screen, and uh, you know. Long pressing on it doesn't do anything. I don't want to short press because I don't want to buy anything. But uh, these are the offers that are show up. So I'm assuming that these will be dynamic and they'll change as we go along. Uh, let's see here. What else can we take a look at? In terms of photos, um, you, you have the ability to download from your uh, Facebook or your cloud. Uh, as it stands right now, I have one. Uh, I've got a few photos here of me just playing around with the uh, camera app and obviously... Uh, you know, it zooms and all of that. Okay. Now, I, I didn't notice if long pressing gives me the ability to remove it, but does long pressing, no, can I share? I can send. I can send it to Facebook or I can send it to Skype. So the menu system itself is, uh, you know, I guess comprehensive, whatever. Uh, let's see here, newsstand, you can go out and get um, magazines. I did download the Wired app. I've yet to download an actual Wired um, issue because, well, they're 300 megabytes and I didn't really want to wait for it. Uh, music, uh, we already established the fact that the, uh, that the audio is amazing here. I don't have any music, uh, nor do I care to at this point. Uh, we've done books. The games, it does appear that from a gaming perspective, uh, it gives you the ability to uh, share some of your scores and whatnot, and uh, it gives you the ability to kind of keep them separate. Uh, like I said, you go out to the store, uh, the store has all of your apps and whatnot, and it kind of pushes you into a certain area depending on what, what, where you hit the store link from. It takes you straight into games and whatnot. And, and, and like I said, if you download a game, when you go back to your home screen, that game will be uh, installed and then you'll have ads showing other people downloaded these apps as well. So they really, they're really pushing the uh, games, they're really pushing the store, they're really pushing the ads on you. I mean, th they demonstrate this as being a service. They're definitely making that uh, apparent. Let's do a drop down here. Now you'll notice that mine says Kyle's second Kindle. That's because I do have the original Kindle Fire so that it recognizes that the same email address was used. Uh, let's see here. So it's giving you the ability to go back to the book where I was. You have volume control, uh, your brightness, uh, and I, don't, I didn't really play too much. Automatic brightness is on, so nothing there. Uh, if you hit more, it does take you into something that's similar to the Android settings, and we'll kind of go over that real quick. I'm going to help and feedback and user guide and all that. I don't want to do any of that. Uh, my account, which shows you that you can deregister or manage social network accounts or email. I did not set any email up here. Uh, applications, if you need to go in and remove anything or change the way it's notified or anything. Uh, parental controls. Uh, I did not turn that on, and I uh, haven't played with that at all yet, so that'll be uh, for another day. Uh, sounds and display, very obvious, wireless, obvious device, um, shows your battery. The about under device uh, gives you the ability to see your system version, uh, MAC address and all that. does have Bluetooth, I haven't played with that yet. Uh, let's see here, location-based services. Um, Okay, haven't played any with that at all. Uh, it does not have GPS, uh, which is kind of a drag, but then again, I never used the GPS on my Nexus 7, so maybe it's a moot point. Uh, keyboard, um, very uh, similar to other keyboard settings. You know, you've got your uh, auto capitalization and uh, the sounds for the key press, which I obviously have off right now. Um, I, I should probably turn that on, to be honest with you, because I, I do like that. Uh, I miss the fact that the haptic feedback doesn't exist in some of these tablets. Um, the, the spelling and grammar was, was decent with me playing around with it. Uh, security. Security is a fun one. Uh, security does two things that are really important, really. Uh, enable ADB, I did go in and turn that on. Um, and then the other thing is um, the, the lock screen password, you can turn that on as well. So I know some people like the security. Uh, let's see here, applications, I think I missed something here. You do want to have the ability 
to allow applications to be installed. And the first time you try to install an APK, uh, and it doesn't, it doesn't, there it is, allow installation of applications. You want that on so you can install your APK files from elsewhere. Uh, that, that's, that's kind of a given for a device that's locked down like this. Uh, let's see here. I think that's it in terms of the uh, system settings. Realistically, um, it, this is running smooth. Uh, it, it's living up to what is its, its expectations. Uh, Amazon set a level of expectations and said, look, uh, you're going to get a device that's going to push our stuff onto you and let you, uh, you know, gobble up all of our services. And it's definitely doing that. Uh, in terms of hacking and rooting and all of that stuff, hasn't quite happened yet, but you saw how easy it was for me to install uh, uh, APKs, uh, Android apps from elsewhere. Uh, I'm sure with some time we'll have the Google Market, I'm sorry, the Play Store available for this device soon. And then, uh, and then we'll be able to uh, do quite a bit more. All right, the last thing I want to do here uh, is just real quick, I'm going to turn it back off. Okay, so it's off, and I'm going to zoom out quite a bit here. Uh, here it is. Here is your uh, original Kindle Fire. And I just uh, zoom in here a bit. So here's your original Kindle Fire. Uh, Height-wise, uh, it's exactly the same. And if you uh, put them on top of one another, and line them up fairly, you'll notice that there is uh, almost a good inch in terms of uh, width. And uh, let me focus here a bit. Okay, so here's your uh, thickness uh, difference. It's, uh, it's definitely thinner. Obviously, the uh, taper there is a lot better than the rigidness of the... Uh, uh, original. So the original was uh, apparently somebody was uh, complaining about the rigidness of it. I'm not really sure why you would uh, really care. So that's that. And uh, while we're at it, I might as well throw him into the mix. Here is my Nexus 7. Uh, we'll just get rid of the original Kindle Fire. The Nexus 7, uh, in terms of height, it seems to be uh, almost exactly the same. It, it might be Actually, the uh, Nexus 7 might be just a tiny bit taller. And in terms of uh, width, uh, it looks like it suffers the same fate, uh, that it's uh, a bit wider than the uh, Nexus 7. And then looking at it uh, thin, man, I'll tell you what, it's, it's pretty close. They almost look identical. Wow, maybe they, uh, huh, it, it, actually it might even be a, just a tiny, just a tiny bit thinner than the Nexus 7, just ever so tiny. But obviously the, the big deal with the uh, Nexus 7 versus the, uh, this new Kindle HD is the speakers. I mean, you're, you're talking about uh, a very small speaker versus uh, two very powerful ones. So that's, that's a big deal there. All right, well, um, hopefully this uh, covers all of the items that people could possibly ask in terms of the basics of the, uh, of the uh, Amazon Kindle Fire HD. Um, I didn't talk about it, I didn't show you. I did run Quadrant. I know Quadrant doesn't seem to have the, uh, the clout that it used to, but I did run Quadrant on this. I got a 2100, uh, which was uh, falling quite a bit shorter than I would expect it to. Um, you know, it did identify that it had all of the correct, you know, gyro and all of that stuff, uh, all the sensors, the light sensors and things like that. They were all in there, pretty standard stuff. Um, so, you know, frame rate and all of that with Quadrant wasn't exactly what I would want. But again, nobody's really paying much attention to Quadrant anymore, it seems like. Uh, but like I said, hopefully this covers all the bases in terms of uh, uh, the basics. And um, we can go into depth more with it uh, later date. I am going to actually uh, play 
around with uh, all three of the devices and kind of give you a, a more detailed comparison uh, between all three of them as I uh, move forward with my videos. So uh, I want to encourage you to check out my website, reverendkyle.com, and uh, take a look through all of the rest of my content. Uh, I will be playing avidly with uh, all three of these devices and seeing what I can do to either uh, break them or make them better. <laughs> Uh, if you do have questions, please post them in the forums on ReverendKyle.com. And I'll leave you with that. Uh, this has been Reverend Kyle showing you uh, my first impressions of the Amazon Kindle Fire HD.